Well, looks like I've got some backpedaling to do. Episode 18 of Clan Ad After Story is the best 24 minutes of entertainment I've seen in my entire life. Now, I've seen lots of great anime, TV shows, and movies in my day, but this episode tops even the greatest of them by a mile. It's heart-wrenching, beautiful, and joyful all at the same time. It's a huge turning point in the story, but that doesn't mean that's all it is. The events here have huge implications for everyone. Yushio's life is forever changed because she finally gets her father back. The lives of the Furukawas, as we'll see, are forever changed as well now that Yushio is no longer their responsibility. But most prominently, we finally get to see Tomoya mature and grow beyond the person he's been. A moment that has taken us almost two full series to get to. But that's just it. This episode is so long in the making that it's impossible to see coming. I mean, sure, you might figure out something's gonna happen. But not this! That was the first time, Daddy. No, no, stop! I can't take that again. I've watched this series five times over, but this scene still makes me sob profusely every time I see it. It has immense staying power, and it hits with the weight of a thousand broken hearts healing. And it's mostly thanks to that motherfucking song! How am I not supposed to cry? How is anyone not supposed to feel like they just got punched in the heart? How did they do this? It's not just that I love this scene, I'm not gushing over it like some vapid fanboy. I admire this scene. The animation, framing, art, and cinematography are stunning. The voice acting, regardless of which language you prefer, is so powerfully delivered that you'd think this is a real father reuniting with his real daughter. It's that damn good. It's the single finest piece of animation I've ever seen. If anyone asked me what the greatest anime of all time was, and I only had five minutes, I wouldn't waste a second. I'd just say, watch this. That was the first time, Daddy. <sighs> ah, damn it. It's too much. But okay. I think I've said everything I wanted to, so... Let's see where we go from here. Tomoya returns home with Yushio and happily reunites with the Furukawas for the first time in five years. He also visits Nagisa's memorial stand and decides to take her stuffed dongos with him. Everyone shares a wonderful dinner, but then, in the middle of the night... Gotta admit, that little girl helped us through some pretty tough times, didn't she? Yeah, she really did. But that's all over now. It's okay. You're right. You worked hard all these years. It's all right. Let it go. You did a fine job. It's your turn to cry now. Uh, Akio. When it feels like there's nothing you can do, I'll be there to help you. I'll stay by your side until you don't need to cry anymore. So it's okay now. Let it go. Does everyone want in on the crying action? Why not just gather up the whole cast and have a big sob sesh to get it out of your systems? So Tomoya drops Yushio off at preschool and heads to work to tell Yusuke the good news. He brings home all of Yushio's stuff and the two head out in a walk where they bump into Coco and Buki and someone we haven't seen in a really long time. Fuchan! So this is your sister, huh? What now? She's so cute. Can Fuku hug her please right now? Why bother asking if you're gonna do it anyway? Yeah, it's like she never left at all. Or that I didn't care she was gone. Something interesting to note is that in Fuku's arc, 
Coco wanted to postpone her marriage to Yusuke until after Fuko woke up because she didn't feel right about being happy while her sister was in such a terrible state. However, it was Tomoya and Nagisa who talked Coco into going ahead with her wedding so that Spirit Fuko could make her sister happy in the anime. But in the visual novel, because that story arc took place in a different world than the one where Tomoya ended up with Nagisa, Coco actually didn't get married to Yusuke until after Fuko wakes up in the after story portion of the game. So why am I telling you all this? Look, I'm just trying to avoid watching any more Fuko, alright? Roll with me. Luckily though, I get a reprieve as Tomoya finally goes to visit his father and deliver his grandmother's message. Have you been at home all this time? Mm -hmm. I went and saw Grandma just the other day. Oh? Yushio and I took a trip up north and I spoke to her then. Listen, Dad. You must be tired, right? Huh? Don't you think it's finally time you took a vacation? Are you sure? It's all right now. Is what all right? Have I... Have I done everything I need to do yet? No, oh, no, not again! Ugh, damn it, I can't handle another round! This scene is just as powerful as almost anything else that happens in this show, but because I've done all the crying I plan on doing for this series, I'm just gonna tell you what happens. What? If you don't like it, just go watch the show for yourself. Seriously. Go watch it. Tomoya breaks himself over his own knee, confessing how terrible he was for his entire adolescent life. Then, in a stunning act of selflessness, he washes his father, cleans up the house, and sends him on his way. Someday I'll repay all the kindness you've shown me. I'll be a good boy. I'll make you dinner when I come home, alright? I'll do whatever it takes, okay? Then we can eat together. <laughs> right, Tamoya? Oh, for Fox! In all those years, I wonder if he was happy. He lost the only woman he ever loved when his life should have been perfect. And then, all he had was me. He worked and worked for such an ungrateful son. I wonder, I wonder if he ever found any joy in that. I'm sorry, Dad. But we're not done yet, because something of the utmost importance has to happen first. Hmm? Is something wrong, Yushu? There's a light. Yeah, you saw it, right? Tawaya actually got his own orb of light. Now, sure, he's created them for Yukine and all the other girls in the past, but this time he actually got one for himself. Because actually, this scene didn't play out the way you think it did. You might have noticed that when Tomoya creates happiness for other people, that the orbs of light tend to just float in the air or spirit away. However, the reason that Tomoya gets this orb of light is not because he created happiness for his father, it's because he finally accepted the happiness that his father tried so desperately to create for him. By understanding and forgiving Naoyuki, Tomoya is the one that has received the happiness and, accordingly, his own orb of light. But there's even more to it than that. In this scene, Tomoya doesn't even realize that the orb of light is there. Unlike the others, he didn't see it at all, even though it flew right in front of his face and exploded into his chest. This is again because Tomoya wasn't just trying to make his father happy to feel better about himself. Instead, he was humbling himself and admitting all the wrong he had ever done to Naoyuki. None of this was easy, as you can tell by the tears flooding Tomoya's face. This was an intensely difficult thing for him to do. And yet, he earns the Orb of Light because of the happiness he has now received through his father's sacrifice. Tomoya has finally rejected his hatred and shed all of his negative feelings for Naoyuki, embracing him once again as his father. 
Now, this doesn't jive with the visual novel where Tomoya gets every single orb of light, but a lot of things in the anime don't jive with the visual novel, so who cares? Well, anyway, happiness is in bloom again, so that can only mean that it's all downhill from here. What, am I the only one that's figured out the pattern by now? Oh, well, probably nothing. See you guys next time.